Okay, so welcome to the automating GIS processes part of this course. Uh, I guess, is there somebody who wasn't with us in period one? I assume everybody was. Okay, so welcome. Welcome. Uh, anyway, so most of you took kind of the GeoPython part of the course uh, in period one, learning the basics of Python, and now we will continue uh, to apply those skills and uh, kind of advance our skills in using um, GIS-related uh, methods in Python. Uh, now then for seven weeks. The course pages you can find at auto-gis.github.io. Sorry for the bad handwriting in here. Uh, so you'll find all the course materials on these pages. It's the similar structure as with GeoPython. And we'll update uh, the, uh, the materials each week on Mondays before the class starts. Uh, today, uh, I will start with a little PowerPoint presentation that's not yet on the pages. I'll update it a bit later just to give you an overview of the course, um, remind you about the goals, the grading and the contents before we go into lesson one topic. Uh, so indeed, this is a 10 credit point course. It might be that next year this is divided into two separate courses, so it's a bit, has been a bit of a hassle with the body, but glad that you all found the room uh, based on that information. And indeed, by completing these two periods, you'll gain 10 credits and you'll get a grade from one to five based on, based on then the exercises and then we will have a final uh, individual assignment. Uh, at the end of the course. Actually, we will have, in this period too, we will have six weekly uh, tasks that will help you to learn better the lesson contents and then there will be this one bigger assignment. I'll introduce that in more detail probably at the beginning of December, but just that you know that if you are working with a project or your master's thesis or PhD thesis topic, you can develop your own, own topic for the final assignment uh, but also then I will provide some predefined uh, assignments that you can then do so you don't need to invent something if, you, if you're not sure what you want to do. But for example, if you want to do satellite image processing using Python, you can do that in your final assignment, uh, then dive into those, those methods. All right, but still uh, in this second period, you will probably actively need to go to period one materials, so GeoPython uh, course pages, and then uh, all the new stuff will be will be then in this uh, new new web page. So who are we? As I'm talking about we, uh, my name is Ingi Fuokko Heginheimo. I'm a PhD student here uh, at the Department of uh, Geosciences and Geography. I'm doing my PhD in the project called Social Media Data for Conservation Science in the Digital Geography Lab Research Group. So I'm working with Tuuli Toivonen, who's the professor in geoinformatics, and then Henrik Tenkan, and he's kind of behind the scenes at the back end. So Henrik is now in, uh, in London at UCL doing a postdoc here, but Henrik is kind of the main author of the materials that we will be using. We have been co-developing those this course now for a few years, but kind of the main, main, main ideas and main framework comes from Henrik, so I have him over Slack all the time, answering my stupid questions about what what module should we update this year and so on. Uh, so me and Henrik have been developing the lessons and then of course we have Sakari and Sara on in the practical sessions helping you with the tasks and then uh, giving you points for the weekly exercises. I will be then checking the final assignments at the end. Um, yes. There's a lot of text, but kind of the point of the whole course is summarized here, maybe somewhat similarly as in WebAudi. So kind of the goal of the automating GIS processes course, including the GeoPython part, uh, is to teach you the basics of programming uh, in Python, basic concepts, uh, basic methods uh, for doing data analysis, uh, and then learn to apply these skills to solving geographical questions. So geographic data analysis, spatial data analysis in Python, so that we can automate the processes that we are uh, using for solving, solving questions 
related to space and time uh, in our research, but also then of course applied to other other questions in practice. Um, so basically, I'm assuming that all of you have taken some GIS courses using ArcGIS or QGIS. If you haven't, that's not super serious. But basically, kind of the methods that we are using, you should be already aware of. So buffering or overlay analysis, network analysis, projections. You will probably get some like aha moments, like getting deeper understanding about these processes now that we're uh, programming them. Um, but in that sense, there isn't so much new in terms of the fundamental approaches. But then we'll learn how to put those into action in Python. And then in, in addition, we have already learned and will continue learning uh, version control using Git. Uh, and then documenting, communicating your work in the GitHub repository. So the communication part, writing comments in your code, documenting what you're doing is also one of the learning goals of this course. Uh, and as in the previous period, uh, the le lessons will be interactive, so if you want, you can code along uh, on Mondays, you don't have to, of course. And then there's a weekly uh, exercise and then the final project. More text, but just to kind of repeat what you're supposed to be learning uh, during this autumn, uh, is to produce and test your own code, hopefully using modular code, so that means at least that you would be using functions, that you can reuse the code that you have written before. Manage spatial data, so read and write, for example, shapefiles or geopackages. Uh, change project, manage and change projections, pre-classify data, so the very basic data management procedures. Um, then apply spatial analysis methods, so buffering, network analysis, spatial joins uh, in Python. Visualize the data, graphs and maps, uh, and then kind of in the final project to implement a data analysis workflow, hopefully independently or then according to a pre-assigned task. So you notice that some of these things you already know based on first period, but maybe the things related to spatial data might be then new. Uh, furthermore, uh, there are kind of these hidden agenda in the course, so these are things that we're not measuring so much, but we hope that you are learning to independently search for information, so basically learn how to Google things related to spatial data analysis. Uh, apply new methods, so again, check for online documentation, apply new methods that we necessarily haven't taught here. Uh, be critical about these online documentations because the internet is full of things, but then you, as the GIS expert, should be a bit critical on what, what tools to use and what parameters and what input data. Uh, then, to really see the value of version control, maybe felt a bit frustrating during week two, but um, more and more as we advance, hopefully you find it useful. And then, uh, communicating your analysis workflow, so code is more often read than run, so we hope that you learn, uh, remember those lessons learned already in period one, and then complete assignments on time. Uh, we have deadlines uh, for the exercises, if you have good reasons for submitting late, that's fine, but I think, because I'm personally very bad at like doing anything on time, so take this as an opportunity to plan your schedule, submit on time, and if you know that you won't be able to submit meet on time, then let us know and we can agree on the schedule. So we don't want to make anybody too stressed about the deadlines, but then of course, as we have 50 students, we need to also manage the uh, grading and uh, checking the assignments, so then it also makes our work easier if everybody submits on time. Okay. Uh, the essential links are there. Uh, we'll go through some of these soon together. Um, Slack, so there are new channels. I'll show them soon, but you need to self-join these new channels for the second period. Mm -hmm. And then there's also a dedicated uh, working environment for the se second period uh, in CSC notebooks because we're installing some additional packages but I'll also show those 
those soon in practice. Uh, so what are we actually learning during these seven weeks, uh, topics by week? So today we'll look into very basic elements of GIS data, so points, lines and polygons. So we'll learn how to represent geometries in Python using a, using a pack package called Shapely. Then the following weeks is kind of this basic data, spatial data management and analysis. So we'll be using GeoPandas should sound familiar, so there's pandas plus geo, uh, so pandas uh, with some additional capabilities for spatial data with which we can then, uh, for example, read in shape files and such, um, geocoding, reclassifying, uh, then week five is quite nice, we'll do maps, static and interactive maps. Uh, week seven, there's some uh, network analysis based on OpenStreetMap data. Uh, and then the final week, this is a bit different than last year, will include some raster data processing, which we didn't have last year. And then there will be a demo about Python in GIS by Tatu, who you might have met during period one. Uh, so week seven is most lo likely organized so that the lesson is about raster data processing and then the kind of demo tutorial is probably organized during the practical session on Thursday. So the practicals are again on Thursdays from noon to four. And on week seven there is no additional exercise. So it's, it's more for you than to get inspired about different methods. And by that time you'll be then working on your own project. Okay, uh, then I have collected a few slides about examples of GIS in Python. Mainly there's, well, something i done and then some examples of master's theses from our department using Python. So just to give you some food for thought what you could already do uh, during your studies here in Kumpula. Uh, maybe as a side note then of course many, I think that many of our master's level geoinformatics students are somewhere in some Consult consultancy companies doing Python. So that's then another avenue, but these are more research examples. Um, so this is one example of a work I was involved with. It was actually the first time I ever used Python. So it's a paper by my other PhD supervisor, uh, Enrico Di Nini, uh, where we mapped um, kind of the global, global hotspots uh, concerning unsustainable harvesting of, of species. So the map shows areas where there are super vulnerable um, endangered species uh, and areas that are also under high harvesting pressure, such as fishing. So you can see that in South, Southeast Asia, for example, there are such hotspots. And what this analysis has kind of taken as input is like thousands and thousands and thousands of layers of species range maps and my job was to process all those layers of data for the further further analysis. Uh, so this is a workflow of the um, kind of or the data analysis workflow flowchart uh, and where my data processing took place was kind of at the starting point. So there were indeed more than 4,000 species or subspecies uh, as a polygon kind of polygon layers and kind of the process was quite simple. You had to repeat some, we first rasterize the data and then we map the data at different resolution levels. But you could imagine if you would click, click and say, do that manually for 4,000 times, it would take a lot of time and there would be many errors. So we used Python for that. Um, at that time we were using mm, Python 2.7.8 uh, and ArcPy, which is the Python module for running ArcGIS uh, tools via Python. Uh, and the processes that we included were subsetting the data, uh, rasterizing the data, and then doing these different resolution levels. And there's a little snapshot of the, of the it's quite a simple script, but then of course involves, involves many, many different steps. Uh, can maybe show you an example of if this opens. 
So all of the tools you're using in ArcGIS should have some documentation like this uh, with examples, kind of usage examples. So basically there's a function name, as you have seen before, there are some parameters, and then you can plug that in uh, to your data analysis workflow. So this is the way kind of how I started to use Python. I had studied Java programming before and I had done my master's thesis in using R and then I kind of just started running Python codes and learned, learned that syntax. Afterwards I have kind of moved away from using ArcGIS tools towards open source tools that we are learning then during this course. Uh, so we have some old course materials for using, using these ArcGIS uh, package uh, functions, but we won't cover that in detail um, this year because there's kind of nicer and cooler tools available as well. Um, do you have any questions about this, by the way? Did you get the point? Mm -hmm. Yeah? Like, did you say you also use R and have been using R mostly? Yeah. So, what do you see as the biggest difference in There are, well, they are somewhat overlapping, of course. It depends on what you're doing. So let's say if you're doing like some species modeling, there's very good packages in R for doing that. But then I would say that if you're doing this, like we were processing global scale rasters with like high, like super detailed resolution. So at least at that time when doing those things in R, you just get a memory error. So Python is more powerful in that way. Of course, now that was five years ago. So might be that things have improved. Not really. Yeah, so, so that if you're working with large data sets or like heavy time series and such, and also I would promote Python, especially for the data management, uh, projections, things like this, if you're working with big databases. And then there's some of the analysis things, mapping, you can do the same things with both. Uh, and then it's just a different language, but yeah, I kind of, and also in our research group, we use Python, so it's also about the community with whom you're working. But I can share some funny internet comparisons, like the battle between Python and R, and who wins, and then it's a tie at the end. So there's no no kind of, I would say Python, but then somebody else would say R. And then there's also these, you can check these charts that who gets employed with what skills. And yeah. So both are good, but yeah, I think there is nothing you, couldn't do, of course there's these like authored packages that might exist in R and not in Python and vice versa, but for this like if you really have to deal with geometries, the spatial data layers, um, so Python is a good tool for that. Uh, yeah, and this actually it took three years to get the paper published, so even though we used Python to automate the stuff, it was quite a long process. Um, so a few more examples before we get into practice. Uh, this is now an example, sorry for the finished screen capture from Helsingis Sanomat. How many of you read the newspaper piece? So it says that an ex exceptionally awesome master's thesis from he the University of Helsinki solves spatial segregation with, a, with an innovative tool. So Herta. Uh, Lammi, this was, I think it was done in May this year, so she developed kind of an optimization model that takes in some, uh, kind of reads in some, reads in demographic data and redraws um, the school districts so that they would be more equal, kind of in an iterative manner. Uh, the code is on GitHub and the thesis is on eThesis if you want to check it out uh, more carefully. Maybe we can have a sneak peek from here. Uh, so for example, there's, it's actually not so many files. There's a main kind of the main tool, or if you imagine you would have a Jupyter notebook as the front end, and then there's a bunch of functions, functions doing th different things. Uh, but for example, there's a tool called Shapely and LineStream, and we will today uh, learn how to use that tool and maybe after that you can read Herta's code and check a bit more in detail how the algorithm works and reiterates 
the boundaries until they are kind of equal uh, according to some, some standards. Um, then another example, Mas Samuli Massinen's thesis, which was inspected, when was it, two weeks ago? Uh, he used Twitter data from kind of greater Luxembourg region to look at cross-border border mobilities of people. Uh, so there were, I don't know, millions and millions of tweets um, by thousands and thousands of users. And then he developed an, an algorithm to de detect who are those people who are kind of uh, commuting on a daily or weekly basis. So the thesis is not yet on e-thesis, should be soon, uh, but the codes are online. Samuli did this in our research group, so they are under our GitHub page. And uh, there's a photo structure, but I bet Samuli is also using, using quite similar approaches that we are learning in here. So using line strings, iterating things, grouping data, so combining, combining the things that we learned in uh, period one. Uh, yeah, and I don't know, by, by coincidence, Samuli and Hertha both have been assistants on the GeoPython course, so <laughs> that was maybe also why I selected these examples. Mm. And if, if you come up with, if you find some cool examples online, do share them uh, on Slack to give others also inspiration. Then uh, also in ArcGIS, but also in uh, QGIS, you can interact with the desktop software using Python. So you can, for example, in the left, on the left, I think I did some selection in the Python console, selecting the uh, postal code area where Kumpula is located in Helsinki region. And then you can uh, build plugins, so tools, little interfaces for others. So GeoCubes uh, is developed by Tatu, who was uh, assisting us in period one, and he will then come and introduce that package uh, later in December then. So we'll kind of scratch the surface of, of using, using Python in QGIS and developing packages. So if that's something you're interested in, you can dive then deeper into it on your free time. Uh, okay, so that was kind of the very basic info. And we're quite on schedule. I planned it for half an hour. Uh, we'll still go through a, a couple of general things and then we'll get hands on, uh, hands on with the Lesson number one, maybe still about the schedule. This is a bit late hour for having a lesson, so I hope you're all still awake. We could maybe have a break before the cafeteria closes. So latest, so remind if I'm like blah, 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 so do like this and then we'll go have a break at half past and then we don't have to sit here until quarter to seven each Monday. So I'll try to be kind of concise. Uh, but let's, let's see how it goes. And yes, uh, work sessions are on Thursdays. So maybe also based on the feedback from period one. So the work sessions, I hope you take advantage of the uh, support that's available because the exercises really help you to learn the contents of the lesson. So me talking here, here for three hours won't make you know how to code the things. Then you'll apply them yourself in the exercises, so that's the main function of the weekly exercises. Uh, I'll sit down and hope that the video still sees me. Mm, maybe I'll jump off to grading, uh, which is not my favorite topic. I kind of assume that if you're here, you're interested to learn these things, and that's kind of all there is to it. But apparently, we need to give you a numerical grade so you get um, kind of 40% of the total based on the weekly exercises. And of course, like as you're doing the things for the first time, we don't expect that you're experts in geocoding in Python when you're doing the exercise. But then after that, you'll know it. So by doing the exercises, you'll get good points uh, quite likely. And then, uh, sorry, the other way around 60% and then 40% uh, from the from the final assignment. So if you're smart, you can do all the weekly exercises, full points, and never do the final exam. I don't know. 
Uh, that's maybe not super useful, but technically I guess you could do that. But I encourage you to reserve time for the final exercise then at the end. We can talk about the deadline a bit later, but probably I'll give you until, let's say, mid-January to complete it, and then hoping to give you the grades in February. But then if you need the grades sooner, then you need to submit earlier. I know some of you might need the credits already, like, at the end of the year. Um, yeah, and roughly, it kind of depends on how you do as a group, but roughly if you get, get 90 points or 93 points of, of the maximum points, you'll get a 5. And half of the points uh, is worth uh, then grade number 1. Mm. Yeah, any questions about this? No? Okay. Uh, so there's a lot of information on the course pages, some of them I covered in the introduction, so I won't read, read all of these now out loud, but you can find, find um, more information then on the web pages. Maybe two things to cover before we get hands on, so uh, uh, let's go here. Installation, so how many of you have installed Anaconda or Python on your computer. Okay, not many, that's fine. I would suggest maybe not not like now or today, but maybe towards the kind of midway through the course, we could have like reserved maybe one hour from the practical sessions so that those who want to install things and get them working, we could kind of have a little installation clinic because there there's 50 different computers and settings. And that can be a bit of a hassle, but I really recommend that you finally install the tools on your own computer so that then it's easier for you to continue with Python after the course. Uh, but let's get back to that. If you want to try it uh, on your own, install Anaconda, uh, the latest version with Python 3.7 at the moment. Uh, and kind of in terms of packages, you can get quite far already by installing GeoPandas. So uh, there's quite a lot of dependencies between different packages. So if you install GeoPandas, you will end up installing many more uh, packages on the background. But don't do it now. Do it at home or then uh, uh, in the practical sessions. So we can then solve any issues with that. But by default, uh, let's work in CSC notebooks. You, Binder is also available, but as we're now starting to use more and more heavy packages, Binder might be very slow at least to launch. Uh, so the, 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 the same instructions are here. The only difference is now that in CSC notebooks uh, we will use a blueprint called AutoGIS 2019. So if you now want to start following what I'm doing, you can go to notebooks.csc.fi. Uh, there they are apologizing for any inconveniences last week with the persistent storage. So there have been some issues, but at least now the notebooks should be working. Um, and then I have now this kind of admin view here, but you will see the GeoPython environment there as well, but now in period two, start using this AutoGIS. They are currently, you can do the same thing in both environments, but later on I will add some more advanced things in here. So I can see that many of you are already here. It might take a bit of time when you're launch launching it for the first time. I need to, uh -huh. yeah, mine is here. So, when we get started uh, in your work, kind of work directory, you, you should find a new folder called uh, AutoGIS. And then you will see other folders as well. So everything we do in this second period, you should then organize under that folder. I'll just co come around and see a bit how it looks like before we actually start. It's kind of now, um, I'll just show you where we are. So how the environment is organized. So we have the root directory is called work. 
and under work, you have the uh, exercises and notebooks for, from period one. It would be, of course, nice to have those under Geo. So those are the GeoPython notebooks and GeoPython exercises. So some of you might have uh, additional folders in here if you have cloned your exercises in there. But the important thing is that you should have this auto GIS folder. If you double click that, it's a bit slow, but let's wait. Um, Mm -mm. You should have another set of exercises and notebooks. And if you double click on notebooks, there's another notebooks. This is a bit stupid. Uh, and then inside there, you'll find when it decides to cooperate. So you will then see, find the <coughs> new materials from here. So lesson one, geometric objects. If you had trouble finding that file, let me know. Uh, there was one, one kind of error case, but otherwise I think we are all set up. So the point here is that we are using the same kind of storage, persistent storage as in period one, so you will have all your exercises and notebooks from the first period, but now in the second period, always use this auto GIS folder to keep things organized. It's up to you to organize your files in there, but this is the place where you will then get the new uh, lesson materials. Okay, um, so I suggest we do maybe half an hour, 25 minutes of uh, Python, and then a uh, little break, and then some more Python and then go home. So lesson number one, uh, automating GIS processes course. So I'll talk a bit more about GIS uh, in Python, just to repeat, uh, get an overview of the useful modules there are, and then we'll start using Shapely uh, and build some geometric objects. Basically points, lines and polygons, very, very, very basic stuff uh, in kind of the building blocks of geographic information and spatial data. Uh, in addition to the kind of example, example analysis that I showed earlier, uh, for example, what we can do when we combine GIS and Python is to build interactive online maps. We'll do something like this during week, week five. I think this is now built with Poke. Uh, so you, very basic web mapping uh, uh, examples where you can hover over hover over uh, a thematic map, for example. But then, of course, even the more interesting thing, at least for me, is the underlying data analysis and how we actually get to even plotting plotting the maps in the first place. So the GIS analysis part is, of course, uh, central central in this course. And then, as I mentioned, uh, you could also uh, also use Python um, bundled with ArcGIS, uh, for example. But in this course, we're teaching you to use open source tools. So that means that they are free to use now. And whatever you build, uh, you can share, share with the world, or at least uh, with your colleagues. Uh, and you actually know what the tools are doing, so it's not a black box black box thing. You can read the documentation if you want to change the tool. You can you can do that, and also moreover, there's a kind of active active community developing these tools at the moment. So when you were asking about Python or R, so of course also in R there is an active developer group. But in these like most popular packages in Python, there's a very active. Uh, community developing them, which means that they are stable and they are updated uh, and they are kind of matched with them, the latest latest so software version. So at least at the moment, at the moment, the tools we are teaching should be also there uh, in the future. Uh, so what tools are available for doing GIS in Python? So, well, the answer is that there are many, many, many packages. But luckily, we can get quite far already uh, by installing GeoPandas and then these other packages such as Fiona, Shapely, um, 
and others, also then NumPy, others, other packages we mentioned in period one are kind of uh, under the hood there. But in the future, you might also need to go look into the uh, documentation of other tools than GeoPandas itself. Uh, to mention some of these, of course, often we, if, even if we're doing GIS analysis, we're just doing basic data analysis or aspatial data analysis, so using pandas still, NumPy, uh, Matplotlib for plotting and the other, other tools. Uh, and then in, uh, in GIS, during this course we'll cover GeoPandas, Shapely, uh, well PyPro to some extent to mani for managing uh, coordinate reference systems uh, and others, but then there's many, many more uh, that we are not able to cover during this course. Maybe I'll highlight some of those. So for example, PySAL is, a, is an excellent uh, Python package for the more advanced GIS analysis, for example, cluster detection, uh, hotspot analysis, and a spatial autocorrelation analysis. Is, so for example, if you want to dive into this tool in your uh, final project, you can do that, but I think at the moment we're not covering these these methods in our our course package. And there's also an open source book coming out by the authors of this uh, this package. Uh, then plotting, we will use Matplotlib again, uh, and then some other tools for doing these interactive maps. But then there's other examples. I think I have Dash opening here. So this is kind of a dashboard for data visualizations, which you could then build through uh, Python uh, to show graphs and also maps. This is now something related to oil, oil industry, if you're interested in that. Uh, just to show, show a few examples of, of the various tools available. Uh, but indeed, as you can imagine, we won't cover all of these in detail, but it's good to know the names that you are then able to Google for documentation if you need need uh, need to understand some of these tools uh, more. Uh, all right. Okay. Then finally, let's go into the Python part.